and we are starting right good <laughs> good uh so uh today we are going to have uh uh actually four things together one is the interview the other one uh will be a lecture and the other one should be some sort of a hands-on lecture the first one is more theoretical the other one is showing how did you apply the things that you were uh, talking about uh, talking about in the theoretical lecture but basically it's up to you how do you actually um, um, curate the content and the last part is a tutorial uh, that we eventually agreed that I will teach but you will be there um, to, to help me to actually tell me if I'm doing stuff right yes. uh, hopefully you're I am right. sorry you are for sure doing stuff right <laughs> All right. I, I'm actually um, uh, simplifying your own stuff uh, a lot, but we can talk about it during the uh, tutorial. Now, um, let's make a, a very, very short interview. I'm uh, because we are behind the schedule. I'm not going to that much introduce you because, first of all, I think it's not necessary because uh, certainly people know you. Uh, and the second of all, you are definitely going to show what you are doing at the UCL Bartlett what you are doing um, as, a, as a Nagami um, brand, uh, the design uh, um, studio, and uh, probably also, also more. Uh, I'm just going to say that um, you are uh, one of the uh, pro protagonists, one of the lead protagonists of the discrete architectural approach in, in the uh, computational design, um, and uh, that we know each other from one of our uh, research meetups. Uh, the one we had in Prague in 2017, I think. Um, so, and we discussed things then uh, over a beer a lot. And <laughs> I remember us standing on the street and, and just uh, talking for, for like uh, an hour or two about, about uh, software and, and what, what could be the next big thing. Um, so uh, let's make the interview very quick. Uh, the first question is, oh, is, there, is there anything you would like to add to, to your quick introduction? No, it's fine. I have two hours to talk afterwards, so I think I can feed yeah, so I'm just going to listen for two hours then. Thank uh, you for the... <laughs> um, uh, yeah, th th thank you for actually agreeing, um, um, uh, doing this. Uh, that, that's a big thing for me because uh, I, I wanted to make sure that we are now bringing some content uh, that is not the usual stuff that you can find online. Um, there is a lot of tutorials. I'm, I, I made a lot of them myself. Uh, a lot of tutorials that are showing how to do stuff, but, um, and there is also a lot of lectures and there is also a lot of debates that are discussing very um, um, current things. Uh, and not, not, not that many uh, debates where people are discussing general stuff. So uh, I'm very happy that we can talk about very general stuff. And let's skip the, the fact that we are in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, let's not talk about that thing, uh, because still there is architecture that we need to, to do. And um, um, yeah, so uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, why do you think or what when you, there is a lot of content um, in the in the realm of uh, computational architecture. You can, I'm pretty sure your your um, social media feed is full of pictures of something that people are producing, and 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 they call it computational architecture or or computational design or parametric design or whatever uh, uh, we call it. Um, how do you make decisions whether something is interesting or valuable or pushing the boundaries and if something is not, what makes the difference between a really valuable computational design and not that much valuable one? Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a that's a it's a very interesting question. I think I, I will actually expand on on that topic uh, quite in detail in 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 the talk. Um, I will not not say if it's valuable or not, or more or less valuable. I think uh, you know the, the the different projects and different experiments that you see online are aiming to a, a different contribution. You need to excuse me for a second. Sorry for <laughs> this. Yeah. So. You know, this is what happens when you're at, you're at home, right? Like people call uh, the door and the bus. And stuff. I'm also expecting a delivery, so yeah. Yeah, so so this happened, and I I would probably have to open the the other door very soon, right? 
Um, I, yeah, I think, I mean, there are like different stages on uh, understanding what we could do with the, with the, 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 the new tools that, that we started assuming in the, in the discipline. Like, I mean, back in the, in the late 90s, early 2000, when uh, people like Greg Lean, right, started to use uh, software for, for generating architectural objects. Um, I think the, the, the first step is normally fascination, right? I can do things that I couldn't before. And I, I think that is in itself very valuable, right? The second step, I think, is assimilation, right? Uh, you start kind of understanding these tools, you start to challenge them, but then you see opportunities beyond the obvious, right? The obvious in the early stages on the, of the digital is, oh, wow, we can do, we can do Corbellian in spaces, achieve continuity uh, that, that we, we couldn't otherwise with the, uh, like Cartesian, uh, on, on architecture, right? Uh, so, 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 I think, and they start kind of filtering that out and, uh, and, and see how that can generate a system. Manuel, we are, we are losing you again. You we are, uh, you are losing the connection. Dan? Yeah, yeah. Um, now I can hear you, but we are losing you uh, when you are when we are finishing the sentence. Can I repeat? You maybe, you maybe, uh, maybe if you switch off the camera. Or... Hear me well. yeah. No, we cannot really hear you so so well. I'm also going to switch off mine so that it's not so embarrassing for me just to show my face. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me now, Jan? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so if at some point it goes off, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, so what I, I was saying is that we've gone now through like more than 20 years of, of, of digital. And it's, it's still at many levels in the, in the wider range of the profession, this is still striking, right? Like, uh, uh, you know, if you ask 90% of the architects, or like you know, actually pulling the stuff, right? Making these uh, buildings a reality, uh, with an answer, and uh, and I think it, it is actually a beautiful moment when you when you see people being that curious that they start to learn the tool and uh, understand what you can do. Right, uh, online that we see the first steps of fa of fascinating uh, and uh, that that is the vast majority of the example from the you know you know it, it again became so uh so slow that you sound like a robot which is exciting but it's very difficult to understand mm. okay what, what do you suggest let me try uh, i so, uh, I'm sending to my 4D. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now? Yeah, now it sounds good. Now it sounds good. I, we're going to be very challenging and try the video. Uh, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. So my phone is better than, than my, my router. Yeah. Um, yeah, I apologize for, for this. It's just uh, I, I only have uh, two megabytes available in central London. That's part of the discussion that we were yeah, having yeah. before. 
anyway, uh, coming back to the topic, I think, um, yeah, like, like you see a little bit of a, of a large variety of, uh, of work um, that sometimes is, is just, you know, these kind of very first steps on being fascinated about the, about the tools and, and see what you can do. And then you see those who are uh, pushing those tools to the next level and, and really leading the discourse uh, to, to really discover the new architectures that can come out from uh, not only the use of these tools, but uh, understanding everything as, a, as an industrial kind of uh, next step, right? And, and that's where I think uh, um, those people now are starting to talk about an architecture as a result of automation or that, that deals with automation directly. And uh, using actually the, 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 same, the same tools that we described for parametric design in, back in the early 2000s for doing like, um, you know, construction protocols, for uh, understanding materials differently to, um, you know, really rediscover the way architecture is, is designed and made. And, uh, and I think you need both. That's why um, um, I would, again, not say that it's, uh, it's kind of uh, more or less viable. I think the different stages or where you jump in the discourse um, aim to have a different contribution. And the entire ecology is what is pushing, in this case, digital design forward and hopefully be adopted by, you know, the wider range of architecture, right? The, uh, which we, we need to still remember, um, you know, those people in, in right now, right, like at, attending this workshop or participating in the conferences, those who are having beers in, in, in all these events and, and discussing what the future of architecture is, this is still a very low percentage of the discipline. And uh, I think that the new kind of the new goal or the, the goal of the new generation is to start to recover the, the agency of the architect more, more globally uh, rather than limiting uh, ourselves to an academic discourse. Sorry, um, that was a long answer to your... That, uh, that's actually very good. Um, I, I like it very much. Um, but it seems like when you are uh, talking about various uh, challenges, you somehow take as a given that there is a challenge. So, uh, because there are some projects that are not really uh, challenging uh, topics. So is that right that you expect a good project to, to uh, really uh, focus on a challenge, to challenge something? If you need a good project to, uh, to challenge something. I, I actually think you need, you need many projects to truly challenge something. Right, and uh, some of them are short and stupid, right? And when you look back, you see, oh, <laughs> what, what happened here? I was, I was an amateur, uh, but but they still have value and contribution to uh, the deeper understanding that you generate in, in, in following projects. So, I think uh, you know challenges. Like that's that's a, a very important kind of um, you know question in in humankind generally is. You need to uh, set up your goals and, uh, and you need to make sure that there is short term goals that are achievable and long term goals that, that are more challenging and that could only be fulfilled by, by the smaller ones being finished. Um, and I, I think that's a little bit of a, the, the, the game that we're playing with, uh, with digital design, right? And we still do this like quick and cool exercises that are fascinating and, ex and inspiring. And at the same time, we, we develop these longer term projects that are perhaps colder, right? Like, you know, automation, I'll, I'll talk about that a bit more, but you know, automation is cold, right? It's like a machine following very direct instructions and being able to operate within a certain space, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think the creativity of the architect is key in both, you know, the very short and, and very, uh, you know, the, this kind of like, pure essence of, of, of uh, uh, expression, sometimes artistic expression, and this long-term more overall thinking that, that we're so good at, right? Like, you know, the, the architect is a, is, a, is, a, is a very good, you know, it, it has kind of the, the, the good brain set to, to connect and, and zoom out and see the big picture and then uh, try to establish a plan to create very big problems for our engineers to solve. <laughs> so, 
Uh, I expect that uh, in your lecture, you will talk about what are you actually doing right now. So I'm not going to ask you uh, here, but I have some sort of uh, negatively sounding question, but in fact, it's not so negative. Um, I'm pretty sure you can, you have certain expectations from the future because you yourself are trying to contribute to the future. So you probably see what is coming next uh, in, in the next few years or months or so because you uh, try to try to challenge something or push something and, and, and try to achieve something. But my question is that, is there anything that you already see that should be done or you want to do, but you still see that it's not possible with the current uh, technological possibilities or even your own um, capabilities or the tools that we have? Is there anything that you see that it, this should really happen, but it cannot yet, and we we need to wait. Yeah, everything. <laughs> Good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, everything, everything, and nothing at the same time, right? Um, I mean, I I think, um, again, looking at uh, goals and and probably kind of combining the the, the previous two questions, right? I mean, at the, and like at the very early stages of digital design, we actually did, didn't care about, you know, like what technology we needed to materialize it at all. They said, well, let's experiment and we will figure out how to do it. You know, that's, I mean, that started to happen like 10 or 15 years down the line, right? Uh, like, you know, Saha didn't build anything in 10 years. And then, um, you know, it's because you, you need that exploratory uh, stage uh, dreaming about the tool that will will make it possible, right? Um, I like I like to to think about it in a in a double game, right? So on, on one hand, I think you need to keep on on envisioning what you can do with the next step that is still not there, yeah. And on the other hand, you need to like you know be be really on the ground and see what today is really possible uh but 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 it, it it was almost not yesterday right like being being kind of like tipping down this this uh this uh, uh boundary of, of what could be reality and and i mean that that's a little bit of what we try to do in a, both in the in the lab and the company and and in agami um you know it's 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 real products that you can you can touch you can feel you can you, you can buy right <laughs> sometimes and um, uh, but but and you should everyone should of course uh, I will do a little bit more promo later so let's just yeah yeah do so please do so uh, but then um, I think what is important is that you know there this like you know kind of like more toned down products uh, more architecture and I'm not uh, talking about furniture I'm saying architectural products or products of any other kind that are really making use of the technology that we have today pushed to the very limits and then there are there are visions that then start to reflect in the next generation of products right it's a I mean I like the analogy of the of the car industry right you have the the, the, the prototype that is it's all like incredible it's like incredibly beautiful stylish it works perfectly and 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 then you know then you need to deal with uh, with mass manufacturing and 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 then door handles start to appear right and if you if you would keep it at the level of uh, you know a, a, a good uh, a good brand that cares about design and the contribution on, of design in that progress like tesla for example right you will still not have uh, ugly um uh, you know, handles, <laughs> right? And uh, and your translation to reality will be uh, will be a little bit more more um, more challenging, right? Uh, but there is always that dialogue, and I think that dialogue is is uh, incredibly interesting. Of course, I can think of many uh, things that we would do if the technology would be faster and and better and and more accessible. But I mean, also at the same time, and I'll probably talk about this in maybe in the second lecture, you know, the day that technology is incredibly fast and efficient, we will not be talking about technology. We will only be talking about design, right? Uh, like if we will have SLS machines that could print anything in any material instantaneously at any scale, you know, 
I will not get, be give, giving this talk right now. Yeah, I would probably not talk about the tools, but talk about what I could do as a designer and how I can do. Do you think that this is development? Uh, do you think this is really going to happen? That the tools are going to, or the, the machines are going to be so advanced that we wouldn't really have to care about the process? Is that the path that we are actually taking? Yeah, of course. I mean, it it it, it did it did happen already. It has happened in you know, it's the it's the normal evolution of uh, of of humanity uh, coupled with, with technology, right? Like, you know, when the, when the industrial revolution happened, everyone was talking about steel and what, what you can do with the steel, right? And, and then modernism emerged, right? And, uh, you know, it was like a, a fascination for something that you could do that you couldn't before. It, it happened also, you know, the glass and the, the glass palace and so on, right? Um, and I think like today, today is 3D printing or, or, or robotics, right? Uh, but in a few years from, from now, who, who knows who, who, uh, what, what we'd be, but we will not be talking about robots and 3D, and 3D printers as we do today, as we today don't talk about, you know, uh, 2D printers or plotters, right? And, uh, and John Fraser did the, his entire thesis creating uh, a new computer language uh, to be able to, to print in two dimensions with a machine, right? Uh, that was relevant. That kind of junction between, you know, the design and, 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 and technology, right, was relevant at that specific point. Uh, right now, obviously, it wouldn't make sense to to um, to make such a such a such a project. And if you you can couple your project with the new av advances on, on technology, or you can you can focus on what you can achieve as a designer with the tools that you have already today. Right? All right, um, let's, let's uh, jump right into the lecture.